Welcome to Wisconsin in Focus. I'm Bruce Walker, Great Lakes Regional Editor for the Center Square. Joining me today is the Center Square's Wisconsin correspondent, Benjamin Yount. There's been a lot of talk going on about the American Family Field Stadium. You've been covering this massively. You've got a couple of stories out there on it already. And fill in the blanks. Tell us what's new. Before we began today, the the big story that came out yesterday evening, and it, it really wasn't a big story, but you know how sometimes a headline will tell a different story than the body of the copy? The headline writers get sort of a little ahead of the skis. And there was a headline in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, the big paper here in Milwaukee, that said, Governor Evers ballpark funding plan dead, according to Robin Voss. And Voss, of course, is the Assembly Speaker, top Republican in the Wisconsin Assembly. And Many, 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 many people read that as, oh, man, the the Brewer ballpark deal is dead. The Brewers are going to move to Nashville or Charlotte or somewhere else. We're going to lose the team. And the reminder that the people involved in this put out subtly, not subtly enough to give me an actual quote that I could use and write the story, but they made sure that I knew what Assembly Speaker Voss was saying was that the governor's plan is dead. The governor's plan was to spend about $300 million in one-time money to pay for the repairs at American Family Field, keep the brewers in town. But Voss said he doesn't like that deal. He'd rather do something similar to what the state did when Scott Walker was governor and they signed an agreement with the Milwaukee Bucks to pay a little bit less over time and get a longer guarantee for the for the team to stay in Milwaukee. And that worked out for the Bucks. They got Pfizer Forum, a beautiful place, was was supposed to host the Democratic National Convention, but COVID canceled that. We'll host the Republican National Convention next summer. It likely is going to host an NBA All-Star game in 2025. And of course, Giannis plays there, won the Bucks a world's championship a couple of years ago. What this is going to mean for the Brewers Ballpark Stadium is that the legislature is going to have to lead. And we've written several stories where the budgeteers, to borrow an old Illinois term, Howard Markline, the state senator, and Mark Bourne, the state representative, they've made it pretty clear that there will be some kind of funding for a Brewer Ballpark what it's going to look like, what the specifics are, nobody knows. The line that Mark Line continues to use is that whatever the Brewer Ballpark deal is, it must make sense for the taxpayers. He had a great story at a budget forum, I want to say maybe earlier this week, late last week, where he said, you know, his district's out by the Iowa state line, and it's really tough to sell a farmer out there on the idea of spending taxpayer money so people can come to Milwaukee and watch a ball game and eat their hot dogs and apple pies and drink their beers. This will get done. There is no one in the Wisconsin legislature who is ready to say, no, walk. We don't care. You're not going anywhere. If the Rays can't get out of Tampa, you're not getting out of Milwaukee. No one is saying that. It's just a matter of how this works. The other story that we wrote this week that is interesting and and sort of shows the broad bipartisan nature of the support for the Brewers is there's this new coalition called the Home Crew Coalition. And it's business owners and the typical sort of tourism people, but also a couple of big name conservatives who've signed on to keep the brewers in Milwaukee. And, and they're not offering up any money, but they're offering a, a sign, a, a snapshot, to use the term I love to use, a snapshot of the support that this is, of course, some of the typical visit Milwaukee types. And, and Omar Sheikh, who is a restaurant co-owner here in Milwaukee, big name guy, big name tourism industry guy. He's the, 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 the co-chairman. But you, you also have a couple of former Republican leaders, in, including Mike Greeby, who's the former Republican Party chairman, and Senator Dan Kapanke. He's a big conservative out in western Wisconsin, out in La Crosse. Now, he does, too, own a the La Crosse Loggers minor league baseball team, and they got a bunch of money from Tony Evers during the coronavirus spending. But when you start to add some conservative names to this, when you start to make this not Tony Evers, Democratic governor versus the taxpayers, 
then you now have a different conversation. And so as I as I put it this morning on the radio in Milwaukee, don't bet against a Brewer ballpark deal. It's going to take some time. It's going to get done behind the scenes. And whatever it is, there's going to be a way for Wisconsin Republicans to say the financials here make sense for the taxpayers of Wisconsin. Elaborate on that, Ben. We're both baseball fans. What is the benefit for outstate Wisconsinites to shell out taxpayer dollars for a stadium, for a baseball stadium? That is, you can't pick it up and move it. It's not a portable stadium. It's in Milwaukee. You want to go see the Brewers, you have to go to Milwaukee to do it. So you're you're talking about how many millions of dollars to just to uh, bring the stadium into just to, just to maintain the stadium, not 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 build a new stadium, not get anything new, get the same stuff that you've had. Yeah, the the sales pitch and 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 Speaker Voss hinted at this with his conversation with with reporters at the Capitol on Wednesday, and he said, "Look, the Bucks deal from Wisconsin was essentially four million dollars a year for twenty years." to help build Pfizer Forum. And in return, the players' income taxes, the taxes that these players, because they're millionaires, most of them, pay to the state of Wisconsin, comes in at about $6 million. And so it was this idea of, in order to keep this Tax revenue will give you a little bit, and, and and you also have the 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 you know hot dogs and jobs and tourism money, but there's gonna have to be a way. And 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 Ross has said this a number of times. Bourne has said this a number of times. Mark Line has mentioned this once or twice. The idea of finding a way to at least on paper show that what the state is laying out, what the state is offering for the stadium, is less than what the state gets when you talk about taxes on the sale of tickets or taxes that are paid by the players or taxes that are paid by the executives. Now, we all know the the, the experts and, and, and the, the name of the professor at Kennesaw State escapes me at this point, but he's quoted in almost every single ballpark story in America. The idea that if American Family Field went away tomorrow, that all of a sudden $2 billion would disappear out of Southeast Wisconsin's economy. That's not really true. If you don't have a professional ball team, you spend your money elsewhere. You, you go to another movie, you go to a concert, you go down to the casino, you do something. Uh, the people who go to Major League Baseball games go to Major League Baseball games. It's not as if they're just going to take that money, go back home, bury it under the back porch in a pickle jar. But there are are an awful lot of people who come up here. I, I'm a, a, a Brewer fan when, when they're playing everybody but the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals will travel with a lot of fans up here, but Chicago Cub fans come up here and spend money like it's nothing. Because in Milwaukee, parking is $40, not $90. Beers are nine bucks a piece, not 13 bucks a piece. You can get a hot dog and a chicken sandwich and a bowl of nachos for way cheaper at American Family Field than you can at Wrigley Field. And so you do get an awful lot of Cub fans come up here and spend their money. And so there is some truth to the idea that having a major league stadium, having a major league ball team does attract people to Wisconsin. But yeah, when we get down to what's the argument, what's the benefit it to taxpayers, the sales pitch from Republicans is going to have to be, here's what it will cost us to keep this state. Here's what the benefit will be in, in hard tax revenue. The task at hand now is to make those numbers jive. Evers was budgeting $300 million for repairs to the stadium. Budgeting may be a generous term. The governor said he wanted to throw $300 million at this, but the governor also has gone down a litany of things that he wants to throw a couple of million or a couple of hundred million at. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com for more stories from Ben Yount. This is Bruce Walker, Great Lakes Regional Editor for The Center Square. Please subscribe and thank you for listening. 